So right now we're streaming the Xbox One over to the GPD pocket. So it's gonna be very similar to the PlayStation one that you've seen earlier. Apart from on this one, you won't be able to connect up your mobile phone hotspot to it. It has to be on the same network as your Xbox. So that basically means you're gonna to have to be connected to the same router to make it work. So you won't be able to take this elsewhere and play it, but it's still useful in your own home. If you've been kicked out of the room that you're playing your Xbox in, you can go up to your bedroom and you can stream it onto this device here. Now to connect up controllers, you can connect up your Xbox 360 controller and it will work. You can connect up your Xbox One controller via a USB cable and it will work. Or if you wanna go Wi-Fi, then you can connect up this Xbox wireless adapter for Windows and you can connect numerous controllers to this and it will work. What I've done is, because the GPD Pocket has Bluetooth built into it, I've connected up the Xbox One S controller. This is the one with Bluetooth. So right now I'm not using any adapter, any cables. I'm just connected up to the Bluetooth of the GPD Pocket. And as you can see, it works. So at the moment the controls are set up slightly differently because I've got this set up for a steering wheel. Now the steering wheel won't work when I'm streaming but I've got it set up so the steering wheel will work when it's on the Xbox One S. That's why the controls are slightly different. So I have to change gears using these right bumper and left bumper. But as you can see it looks really nice still. And again, the viewing angle, just like before, is really good. And you can connect this up via the HDMI to the TV so it will work on the bigger screen. So if you have a look at it there, you can see it looks nice. So that's it, that's the GPD Pocket streaming the Xbox One via the Xbox app and as you can see it looks nice and works pretty well. Again you can connect it up to the TV using wireless just like you've seen on the PlayStation One or you can connect up the micro HDMI out to the TV or you can use the USB-C multi-port adapter and then you can get the HDMI out from that onto the big screen so you can watch it and play it on the bigger screen which is nice. And there you go, that's the micro HDMI out to the TV and as you can see there, you can now see it on the big screen. Yeah, so it looks nice. So in conclusion, do I like the GPD Pocket? The answer is yes. I like it a lot and I like it a lot more than I thought I would do because I've had the GPD win for a while now and I like this for gaming but apart from that you start to struggle to actually use it as an everyday laptop but with this GPD Pocket you can use it every single day once you get used to it. So it does take a little bit of getting used to because on a normal size laptop the keyboard's a lot bigger and you've got this nice mouse pad here that you can move around and a big left and a big right click. This takes a lot more getting used to. But I hate having to bring this big laptop around with me. Now obviously there is smaller Chromebooks and stuff out there but this thing is tiny and that is its main selling feature is the small size of it. If you don't need something to be small, there's absolutely no point in buying it. You will be able to get a better spec laptop for the same price as this. So there's no point in getting it. But if you want it to be small because you work away from home a lot or you go on a lot of holidays, then this is ideal. So for me now, this gets so much use. I've been on a few holidays recently and I've taken this with me. I've managed to edit a video. I've managed to do all my emails and check things on eBay and do this, that and answer messages and queries and everything perfectly from this, exactly the same as a full size laptop. So I think it's a complete winner purely because of the size of it. The screen's nice, the touch screen nice. I like the keyboard. I like the design of it. I like the feel of it. I can't really criticize it much. Yes, the Wi-Fi isn't as good 
as other devices. Another thing, it will get bashed up and damaged. So this will get scratched up and scraped a lot more than if it was just plastic. If it was plastic, it would look better for longer. But it's so nice that it's metal because although it's going to be hard to stop it from getting scratched and bumped and bashed, it looks a really classy premium product. One other thing that I did notice is when you charge it up, so for example, I let it charge one night overnight, when I woke up in the morning, the fan was still whirring. So although it was fully charged, it looks like when you plug it into charge, the fan starts whirring and the fan keeps on whirring. So it looks like the charger doesn't turn itself off when it's fully charged. I don't know whether it's an issue with my particular charger, but obviously if that fan's whirring, it's gonna be using up a bit of electricity, it's gonna be costing you a bit of money. So normally, I would have thought that when it was fully charged, it would have turned the charger off and it would have just turned itself off. But every time I plug the charger in, the fan keeps whirring and it just keeps on whirring. Might be an issue with my unit. It's not really a problem for me because I just charge it up when I'm using it, so it's not really an issue, but it could be an issue for some people. But apart from a couple of minor issues with it, so we've got the Wi-Fi, we've got the fact that it keeps on charging, the fan keeps on moving, and the other thing, which is quite a bit of a design fault, is the fact that this hinge goes down too far. They should have hinged it slightly higher up or had some kind of swing on it or something, so that then when you had it open to there, you're not gonna scratch the bottom of it because the feet now are too small to hit into it. Yes, you can put bigger feet on it, but then you're making the overall size of it bigger. So that is a bit of an issue because normally you do actually depend on your viewing angle. So for example, right now, you can hear it's scraping. So if I have it like this, you can't hear anything because it's on the rubber feet. But often when you're sat above it, you do want it at that angle. And right now it's scraping the bottom of the screen. So again, over time, you are gonna get damage on that bottom level there. In fact, I can feel already, I can feel a few rough bits. You can probably hear that on the... Yeah, you can hear. So definitely, after more and more use, that's really gonna get scratched up there. But apart from those few little things, I really like everything else about it. So it is a niche product. It's really only gonna suit somebody who works away from home a lot or who goes on a lot of holidays because if you've got this in your house and you use it in your house all the time, well, you might as well opt for something bigger because you don't need to have it so portable. But if you need something portable, then this is ideal and I really, really do like it. And as you've seen from the long video of various things I've done on it, it can do most things and it can do most things well. Obviously, all the things I've shown you can pretty much be done on any laptop. The main feature here, like I said at the very beginning of the video, is the fact that it is so small. That is the one and only main feature of it. So if you don't need something to be portable, there's absolutely no point in getting it. But if you need something that's portable, then this is absolutely ideal. So I hope you enjoyed that video. I appreciate it was a very long video, but I wanted to cover a lot of points. Please give it a thumbs up if it helped you out, and please subscribe for more videos. If you're interested in getting one of these, I have linked to Gearbest in the description there. So click on the link, and then hopefully that will give you the, the latest and hopefully the best deal on it as well. So thanks a lot for watching. Take care. Bye now.